Good day everyone. Our report is about conversion of polypropylene, polyethylene, and polystyrene to liquid fuel via pyrolysis with catalyst. I will be reporting about the introduction. Plastic is a high molecular weight material that was invented by Alexander Parks in 1862. Plastic is a polymer, which means it has a long chain molecules. Since plastic have good properties, it is one of the most commonly used material in the society. It is commonly used in homes, offices, electronics, and all industry. One of the major concerns of extensive use of plastics is the disposal of waste plastic. Due to its limited biodegradability, they create significant problems by piling up in landfills. The pie graph shows the waste generation in Iloilo City as of 2006. You can see here that 45.1 uh, tons of plastic or 15% Third day is thrown away. Here is another graph showing the percentage composition of municipal solid waste in some Asian countries. In the Philippines, 41% of its waste is composed of organic materials, 20% are papers, 14% are plastic. 2% are glass, and 5% are metals, while the remaining 18% are other materials. This is another pie graph showing the content breakdown of municipal solid waste as of 2010. The graph shows that 12.4% of municipal solid waste are plastic. This graph shows the breakdown of the type of waste plastics. 42% are polyethylene, 14% are polypropylene, and 9% are polystyrene. The Society of Plastic Industry, or SPI, need an identification code system that divide plastic into seven groups. This code is a single number surrounded by a triangle of arrows. This is the plastic resin code. This allows the consumers and recyclers to identify the type of plastics by providing a uniform coding system to manufacturers. Plastic number one is for polyethylene terephthalate. Plastic number 2 is high density polyethylene. Number 3 is polyvinyl chloride. Number 4 is low density polyethylene. Number 5 is polypropylene. Number 6 is polystyrene. Number 7 is composed of other types of plastic. We will focus on these plastics which is used in pyrolysis process. What is pyrolysis? Pyrolysis comes from the Greek word pyro, which means fire, and lysis, which means separating. In this process, the organic material is decomposed at elevated temperature in the absence of oxygen. So now let's talk about the discovery of plastic pyrolysis in the Philippines. Here in the Philippines, it was Jaime Navarro who was able to apply the principle of pyrolysis. He is a commer under, commerce undergraduate who have been passionately fascinated by the versatility of plastics. In 1970, he started to recycle plastic scraps to make plastic twine, straws, and sticks in Bacolod. 
In the year 1983, he experimented again and was able to produce liquid hydrocarbons, but the project was not yet visible at that time, so he just recycled banker oil to get clean motor oil for two-stroke motor engines. In December 2007, during the trial run in Bacolod, Mr. Navarro finally found a great way to recycle plastic bags. He found the best process of converting reject plastic scattered on the streets like sandal bag, garbage bags, and styrofoam into fuel. In November 2008, the invention was patented with intellectual property. Let's proceed on the concept of pyrolysis. In plastic pyrolysis, the feedstock is continuously treated in a cylindrical chamber and undergoes thermal degradation without oxygen. The product in pyrolysis is mainly composed of non-condensable gases, liquid, which is equivalent to fuel, and char. Both plastics and petroleum are hydrocarbons, which means they contain both carbon and hydrogen. The difference is that plastics have longer chain than petroleum. If the plastics undergo thermal cracking, it would have similar structure with petroleum. Here is the hydrocarbon range in commercial fuels. LPG have 3 to 4 carbons, petrol have 4 to 12 carbons, kerosene have 12 to 15 carbons, diesel have 12 to 24 carbons, while heavy fuel oil have 24 to 27 carbons. Polyethylene, polypropylene, and polystyrene are all hydrocarbons consisting entirely of carbon and hydrogen which are similar to hydrocarbon fuels such as liquefied petroleum gas, petrol, and diesel. Here is the structure of polyethylene, polystyrene, and polypropylene. PVC is not preferable in the fuel product because chloride is not desirable in the fuels. PVC have different thermal cracking process in different products from those of common waste. If the feedstock contains PVC, the plants must have a treatment system and a solvent scrubber to remove HCl from the pyrolysis product. Polyethylene terephthalate is not suitable because of formation of terephthalic acid and benzoic acid. Plastics are derived from petroleum and have calorific values in a similar range as those of LPG, petrol, and diesel. Here is the table showing the comparison of energy density of plastics and different types of fuels. You can see here that polyethylene, polypropylene, and polystyrene have almost the same calorific value from liquefied petroleum gas, petrol, kerosene, diesel, light fuel oil, and heavy fuel oil. Let's now proceed to the effects of catalyst. Catalyst helps to shorten the carbon chain and thus decreasing the boiling point of the product. It also increases the yield for liquid products and decreases the yield of char. Catalysts reduce the unsaturated hydrocarbons and promote the yield of aromatics and naphthenes. Heterogeneous catalysts are preferred due to their easy separation and recovery from the reacting medium. The reactants diffuse to the catalyst surface and absorb into it and experience chemical reaction. After the reaction, the products dissolve to the 
surface and diffuse anyway. Heterogeneous catalyst can be summarized as none of crystalline zeolites, aluminum pillared clays, conventional acid solids, mesostructured catalyst, superacid solids, gallosilicates, metal supported on carbon, and basic oxides. In pyrolysis process, the catalyst used is nanocrystalline zeolite. A zeolite is a crystalline aluminosilicate with a three-dimensional framework structure that forms uniform pores of molecular dimensions. Zeolites act as sieves on a molecular scale and exclude molecules that are too large to pass through the pores. The three-dimensional frame structure significantly increases the area of receives and absorbs molecules that have similar sizes as the pores. This is the basic zeolite structure. This shows the femur type ZMS5 pentacel chain parallel to Z with a pore size of 0.5 nanometer. The high pore size permits even larger molecule hydrocarbons to go inside the pore, absorbed and experience catalytic reactions such as dehydrogenation, cyclization, and aromatization. This shows that after the catalytic racking of plastic molecules, it results to short-chain hydrocarbons. There are four major catalytic reforming reactions, one of which is dehydrogenation. Dehydrogenation is any reaction process in which hydrogen is removed from a substance, especially the production of unsaturated organic compounds from saturated ones. So you can see here that the hydrogen of methyl cyclohexane is removed and it yields to toluene. Another reaction is the isomerization of normal paraffins to isoparaffins, as exemplified in the conversion of normal octane to 2,5-dimethylhexane. Another reaction is the dehydrogenation and aromatization or dehydrocyclization. This is a simultaneous hydrogenation and cyclization. So as exemplified, the conversion of enheptane to toluene. Another reaction is the hydrocracking of paraffins into smaller molecules. As exemplified is the cracking of normal heptane into isopentane and ethane. So in hydrocracking, the long chain is converted into short chain. This shows the product yield with the presence and absence of catalyst. So the yield of gas and oil were enhanced and the char were reduced when catalyst is used. So now let's proceed to the pyrolysis of feedstock material. First is the PE pyrolysis or polyethylene pyrolysis. So the cracking temperature for polyethylene is 450 degrees Celsius. In the table, you can see that the product yield in polyethylene or for low density polyethylene and high density polyethylene is almost the same. So the oil or wax yield is 16.6 grams for low density polyethylene and 16.7 grams for high density polyethylene. They have the same charred yield char yield almost the same char yield and as well as with the gas yield so here is the list 
of the non-condensable gas for low density polyethylene. We have oxygen, nitrogen, methane, carbon dioxide, ethane, ethane, propane, and butane. The pyrolysis of polypropylene, so its cracking temperature is the same with polyethylene, which is 450 degrees Celsius. Here is the product yield for polypropylene. The, for collected values, the gas yield is 1.91 liter. For liquid, it's 16.63 gram. So here are the components in non-condensable gas for polypropylene. The hydrogen, methane, ethane, ethane propyl which has the higher percentage the highest percentage the propane and then butane so here is the tabulation of the non-condensable gases for polypropylene pyrolysis so the pyrolysis of polystyrene its cracking temperature is 320 degrees celsius for the collected values, we have 64 liters for gas, 18.59 grams for liquid, and 0.6 grams for char. The composition of PS pyrolysis gases, we have hydrogen, we have methane, which has the highest percentage, then ethane, ethane, propene, and butane. So here you can see the major components in PS pyrolysis. We have benzene 8.24 percent, toluene 2.93 percent, styrene, which has the highest concentration, which 68.59 percent, the trimethyl benzene 7.51 percent, styrene dimer 2.77 percent, phenanthrene 1.98 percent. For the total of 92.02%. And that ends my report. The continuation of the report is reported by Ms. Genesis Sermilio. So God bless us all and God will take the lead. Bye-bye!